Good morning, my wonderful, amazing, intelligent friends. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about gravity. Now, gravity is something that makes me chuckle because, you know, we have spent billions and billions of dollars to try to understand particles of physics and all this. You don't even know how something falls to the floor. <laughs> I mean, you drop something to the floor, that's a mystery. But, you know, we're going through all this other stuff. It's absolutely amazing. But anyway, I think I can show you gravity. I think I could show you the graviton, which has never been seen before. Let's look at what a graviton really is. All right, like I said, I'm going to make this extremely simple. You have electrons and you have photons. Those are reactive. Those do things. Then you have the exception, which is the graviton. All it does is carries the other particles. Now I'm going to show you these particles. And this is what CERN's looking for. And I'm going to show you that's the black ball. And these are the white explosive ones. These are muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos. These are the tiniest particles that exist. Now they know, they're, they're kind of, un they understand they're there. I don't know what, but they've never seen them. They just theoretically there, which you know I agree they are there. I can show you there. All right, what you just saw is those particles. Here's how they start with the red laser. Then the red laser gets accelerated. The light gets pulled out, and that is the particle there starts to show itself, and it explodes at the venturi and it actually separates. And this part is one of the separated parts. It was from the white fermion. And then and I'll show you the black part, which is the black ball. It does not explode like the other fermions. It just stays like a little black ball. All right, there's the explosion right at the, at the Venturi. This is 100% white, zero blackness in here, none whatsoever. The black floats around the outside and comes back in later and reattaches. Now, I have some some misunderstandings about this at the moment. Is the black just laying around here everywhere? There's blacks just waiting around to reattach to whites? I don't know. Are the blacks always attached to the whites and is there, there's a 50-50 relationship? I don't know. At this point, I don't know whether the dark, and they would call this dark energy. It's black. It's dark. It's, it's attached to the white, but you're never going to see it except for now uh, against that illuminated background we can see these black balls which are the dark energy and I would call them a graviton too because these can attach right against each other to lay right on top of each other no problem whatsoever and they are going to bring in the white stuff so that is the 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 accumulator the black stuff is the accumulator of the white Best I can say it. Now we're going to get in deep, but let me just go real quick. That's the pulse red laser. It looks like waves. However, Rod Warren came up with a venturi that created acceleration. You can see the light accelerating, and you can see the particle actually coming right out of the wave. You see, and it's a particle, and then it explodes here. And then we're going to see the black and the white. Well, I think you already did see it. And when it comes out this way, they come out spinning, and these are the uh, um, charged particles. Now, just before it went into the Venturi, they were glued together like this, black and white, black and white, like back-to-back -back bar magnets. Now, and then we also found this, which is extremely strange. One came through backwards. Instead of coming through looking like this, it came through as a white spinning backwards particle. And then it, it did this. So there's, there's interactions here that need to be fully investigated. However, light is a particle, light accelerates, light splits up from the dark part of it, which they could call dark matter or whatever it is, or it's the graviton, however you want to just think of it, but it's the part it's it's the non-reactive black ball that attaches to the white reactive portion of matter. Because photons are matter. I don't care what anybody says. These little particles are, no, they're not. They're, they're matter. They're not just waves of nothing, perturbations of nothing. It's obviously matter. That's a chunk of something. And, and the electron flood theory is the way particles are really made. They're made of entirely made of electrons which is nothing more than graviton attached to a fermion white ball. 
and there's, there's an equal number of them appears to me in the masses of the, the cores. And because the gravitons, the black balls, the whatever you want to call them, dark matter, it's the positive side of an electron. So the black ones don't care. They'll get right next to each other. So you're going to end up with a negative rind around a core of negativeness. That's what I'm starting to see now. And that it's still a dipole in the center here, but your 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 positives ones they just lay on top of each other. So who cares? The red, the other ones, the white ones, is get away from me, get away. So they're going to create this these elegant patterns of a distance of from st you stay away from me here, and I'll stay away from you there, and you stay away here, and you stay away here, and you'll end up with these absolutely elegant patterns. But they're going to consist of both positive and negative particles. And the negative, I mean, the positive particles have no explosive value. They're just carriers. I can't explain why one of them explodes and one of them doesn't, but that's what happens. That's the non-explosive one. On an interaction, that's what happens. Your white ones just boom, and the black ones just <laughs> don't do anything. And at rest, when there's no heat exchange, this is heat exchanging or photons exchanging. This is, um, I forget what they call it. Um, you know, it's a transitioning of the particle, either going, whatever, you, you understand what I'm saying. This is when it's interacting, this is when it's laying around at rest. At rest means nobody's got, got any difference in temperature. That's all it is. A, a resting anything, anything that's at rest. It's just not pushing electric, uh, um, um particles out and it's not letting them come in because this is, there's no push, there's no show, there's no temperature change. It's when you, and I did all this stuff, uh, laboratory work and everything, I did long, long, long ago, I understand how calories do this and that and how, and it actually ends up being electricity, right, because every time you push heat, you're literally pushing electrical particles. That's all it is. You're expanding a region, and that makes a particle push further away. And that's what electrical conduction is. I understand this extremely well, and I will discuss this with anybody that wants to discuss it. And that is the new model, is the core. They know it right now. There's no question whatsoever. It's never been right. There's no way it could have been right. The, the nucleus of some of these particles, of, of some of these atoms, have so many isotopes, there's absolutely no way that they can justify these isotopes with the gigantic protons, gigantic neutrons, and a completely negative tiny electron. It's just, it, it really never worked, and I knew it never worked, and I thought it out years ago. And, uh, and it's true, it doesn't work. The only thing that does work is electron flood. And it works absolutely flawlessly. There's nothing I can't explain now. Absolutely nothing. And there's so much elegance in chemistry now. It's just unbelievable now that you understand in between every one of these particles, there's thousands and thousands of extra electrons that can be moved, juggled this way and that way. So you not only can make nickel and copper, you got nickel, copper, do get the pot, the pop, but you can get it in between. You got zillion particles in between. This is nice because it's got, you know, it's got some nice organization and it really does work out well. I'm not saying, I'm not disparaging <laughs> the periodic table. <laughs> oh, this is, what a trip. <laughs> but I'm telling you, there's, there's, there's thousands of particles between us. This is hilarious.